John Calvin, on Psalm 17, verse 1. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of fainted lips. Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. David, confiding in his own integrity, interposes God as a judge between himself and his enemies to be cognizant of or determine in his cause. When we have to deal with wicked men, we may warrantably protest our innocence before God, as, however, it would not be good enough for the faithful to have the approving testimony of a good conscience, David adds to his protestation earnest prayer. Even irreligious persons may often be able justly to boast of having a good cause, but as they do not acknowledge that the world is governed by the providence of God, they content themselves with enjoying the approbation of their own conscience, as they speak, and gnawing the bit, bear the injuries which are done to them rather obstinately than steadfastly, seeing they do not seek for any consolation in faith and prayer. But the faithful not only depend upon the goodness of their cause, but they also commit it to God that he may defend and maintain it, and whenever any adversity befalls them, they betake themselves to him for help. This, therefore, is the meaning of the passage. It is a prayer that God, who knew David to have done justly, and to have performed his duty without giving occasion to any to blame him, and, therefore, to be unrighteously molested by his enemies, would graciously look upon him, and that he would do this especially, since, confiding in his aid, he entertained good hope, and, at the same time, praised to him with a sincere heart. By this form of prayer, the Holy Spirit teaches us that we ought diligently to endeavor to live an upright and innocent life, so that, if there are any who give us trouble, we may be able to boast that we are blamed and persecuted wrongfully. Again, whenever the wicked assault us, the same Spirit calls upon us to engage in prayer, and if any man trusting to the testimony of a good conscience which he enjoys neglects the exercise of prayer, he defrauds God of the honor which belongs to him in not referring his cause to him and in not leaving him to judge and determine in it. Let us learn also that when we present ourselves before God in prayer, it is not to be done with the ornaments of an artificial eloquence, for the finest rhetoric and the best grace which we can have before him consist in pure simplicity.